Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Research Methodology Group at Kyoto University. I am your presenter today, Jingjing Lin. I'm going to continue to talk about case study as a research approach. And this, is, this episode, I'm going to cover um, how to analyze data in case study, mainly focusing on uh, the four analytic strategies in case study research. So this book, uh, this, this presentation is based on the book of uh, Robert Ng, and uh, this, this presentation is also based on the fifth chapter of the book, um, introducing about four analytic strategies, five analytic techniques, and uh, pressing for high quality analysis. For this short video, I will only introduce four analytic strategies. So as I explained in last video, uh, when you collect the data using case study design, you actually follow, you are suggested to follow four principles and collect from different sources of evidence. And after you have the, the data, you actually start to analyze them by following four general analytic strategies by applying five techniques. When using, when using um, different approaches to analyze data, uh, often you can also um, you know, turn to different computer softwares for assistance. Such softwares include Atlas.ti, Avivo, Hyper Researcher. Um, depending on your preference and depending on what kind of uh, um, analysis you need, you may uh, choose different tools. But all this just are tools, they are not strategy. Uh, when it comes to analyzing data in case study, you will uh, need a lot of manual work, in fact. So you can either use general analytic strategies that we are going to cover in this video, or you can form your own analytic strategy. Um, there are different ways of uh, doing um, this kind of formation. But the first step is always to play with data. And there are different uh, tricks that can you play with your data. The first uh, um, suggestion is you can compare data from two different sources. For instance, if you're doing an interview, you can compare two different scripts, uh, which cover two different interviewees. And uh, um, by placing these two data sources together, you can look for different patterns or comments. The second way is to put information in different arrays, uh, which actually re uh, reflect different themes and sub-themes. Um, let's say um, the, we still use interview transcript as example, and uh, you preset, uh, predefine some themes and sub-themes, and you now just uh, um, assign different uh, contents from the chess script into the predefined themes and sub things, as you can see from the right side of the slide. A third way is to construct a matrix of contrasting categories and place uh, different evidences within such a matrix. Uh, as you can see from the right side of the presentation, we have this four zones of, uh, um, let's say, categories division. You can again um, allocate different contents from your interview transcript into different zones of this matrix. Another way of playing with the data is to create some visual displays such as flowchart and other graphics. So you can examine, examine your data um, by revealing um, the structure behind such um, 
such data. Sometimes you can also calculate the frequency of different contents um, occurring in your chat script, for instance. Let's say we're interviewing um, the, a company's employees, um, cons considering their attitudes towards their direct boss. Um, we can count the frequency of a their attitude expressing liking boss and their expression about uh, disliking boss in different aspects like uh, um, ethics, leadership, uh, work performance, different work performance um, aspects of the boss. And then you can calculate, count the frequency of such expressions uh, um, occurrence throughout the whole transcript. Or you can put information in chronological order or some other sequence to um, understand um, the order, the time sequence or um, precursors or a consequence or you know this kind of causal relationship or um, time ordered relationship of the transcript you have. Often um, you have to follow the cycle um, or repeating such a cycle um, to form a final analytic strategy of your own. Um, you, you are going to refer to your original research questions. You are going to constantly interact with the data and uh, um, you needed to count also on your own ability of handling and interpreting the data to state uh, the findings and uh, drawing conclusions. And you have to go forward and uh, backward, repeating such a cycle um, in order to form the final strategy. So what are the four common analytic strategies if you actually don't develop one out of your own um, choice? You can choose um, from four common analytic strategies, as you can see from the screen. The first one is relying on theoretical propositions. The second one is to working your data from the ground up. Third one is developing a case description. And the fourth one is examining plausible rival explanations. I will explain one after another in order. First, um, it is very much a deductive approach, which means you follow some uh, theoretical propositions that you hold, no matter it's from your daily observation, your previous experience, or the um, existing literature, you anyway have a list of theoretical propositions at hand. And following these propositions, you are going to look for empirical data to match these theoretical propositions. So this is typical uh, from theory to empirical data approach. The second one is uh, quite uh, um, opposite from the first strategy. Um, it is inductive. Um, we also call it bottom up. So um, this approach is very similar to the grounded theory. So you actually dive into the data and uh, you form themes, sub themes. Uh, um, you in fact formulate a whole, um, a whole set of theoretical um, conclusion, let's say, from the empirical data and form a theory uh, as a result. The third strategy is to develop a case description. Let's say you don't have some theoretical proposition to, in fact, apply a top-down approach, nor you have, uh, um, you know, have no very um, deep grasp of the data, and so you cannot apply the bottom-up approach. In this case, you can go back to your original 
um, goal of doing this case study. Sometimes it can be a very descriptive goal. Uh, so you already have some topics or you already have some uh, themes in the original goal and you, you, ha you actually elaborated in certain sentences, you know, about uh, um, the purpose of doing this case study. And that can form the original descriptive framework, like, um, like a guidance for your upcoming analysis through the data. Here is a very classical example, a book written by Lind and Lind um, called uh, Middletown. It was published, I believe, in 1929, quite early. Um, if you look at the, the structure of these chapters of the book, um, you will see very, very direct um, topic presentation. So the first chapter is getting a living, followed by making a home, training young, using leisure, engaging in religious practices and community activities. Quite, um, quite direct, right? So each chapter has one aspect of the, about the middle town as a case. So this is a typical case of using descriptive framework to formulate the whole case studies presentation, um, analysis and presentation. Well, the final strategy is to examine plausible arrival explanations. And this strategy is often used in combination with the other three strategies. And when we say address rivals, we don't mean all rivals. We mean those most threatening rivals to your original propositions. Let's give you, let me give you an example. Um, let's say I have this proposition saying entrepreneurship education program works to increase entrepreneurial intention of learners in high school setting. A possible rival or uh, the, the one threatening rival would be the selected high school, a selected case, in fact has a comparatively higher number of students raised by parents with a family business background. Because in the literature, there's evidence saying that family business um, background or parents influence as a role model has direct impact on the in entrepreneurial intention of learners, especially young um, adolescents, adol especially adolescents. So this can be a very critical arrival um, for the case that I just presented. There are different types of rivals, in fact. Um, as you can see from this table, the f there are two categories. One is craft rivals, uh, including three items. Another category is real world rivals, including about six items. The first category reminds us of three craft rivals that um, underlie all of our social science research and textbooks have given much attention to these rivals. Instead, the second category um, is basically very ignored uh, in the literature. It covers the six real world substantive types of rivals and in the um, parentheses and the quotation marks, um, you will see some informal and uh, more colloquial descriptors of each of the six rivals. Hopefully, can give you a better idea about uh, each rival. Well, um, with any general strategy that we introduce so far, um, including those um, strategies that you develop by yourself, outside the four strategies. Um, you should consider using any of the five analytic techniques um, to, in fact, um, analyze the data. So the five uh, analytic techniques will be 
introduced in another video. I hope you enjoyed this explanation, and if you have any questions, you can email me. Thank you for watching.